2,951 kilometres the race so far, so we'll pass the 3,000 kilometre marker today. Stage 19 adds 178 from bourgoin jalieu to Aubenas, and it's tailor-made for a breakaway, really, especially with the big names saving themselves for Mont Bon 2 tomorrow. A lumpy first third, a rolling middle, and a second category climb, which peaks just 16 kilometres from the finish. If an escape group gets over it with a lead, then they'll be the ones fighting it out at the finish for the stage win. Two kilometres to go now for these riders as they head toward the finish and they are flat out. Well, these two riders are still hanging on, they still have a moment to dream, but George Hincap is about to spoil that dream. The rain is at two kilometres now and it's still not raining here. Well, it's still dry in the finishing straight as we can see the motorbikes coming along here. Alessandro Bellan makes one final clip to try and get himself away from Laurent Lefebvre, but he's not going to stop the inevitable because there is big George on the front, docking and diving, nodding his shoulders a fraction, trying to find that little bit more energy to nail back a man who he knows the reputation of because he's won the Tour of Flanders. Here is a right roundabout, and then once they go over this, they've got a nasty bridge. Somebody's taken a shot up there. That's got to be Oscar Ferrer. He's the only one that would do that as he went across the roundabout. I'll give him points for that, for staying upright. <laughs> it was the quickest way, fortunately, Paul, but there is the catch at one and a half, 1.2 kilometres from the line. George Hincap, he's done his job. He has now moved out of it. Julian Dean, by the way, for Garmin. He's now trying to lead Tyler Ferrer as well to the line. This is now going to get a little bit rough on roads which are glazed with water here at one kilometre to go now and they still got the flick up towards the finish at 500 metres. Well, this is an amazing day. Of course, you've got all the leaders of the overall classification in this group, Phil, but I never expected to see all of the top sprinters present and correct as they're now looking and searching for the Flamme Rouge, the red kite. Cavendish is still up at the front. He's in second position. That's a long way to go from here on his wheel there. Is Hushoff behind him at Cholik. A little bit further back, you can see the orange jersey of Oscar Freire. He needs to win it for the boys this afternoon because they did a great job for him. Mark Renshaw leading Mark Cavendish with Hushoff on his back wheel. Cholik, Cholik just behind him. This is going to be an almost slow motion sprint because now they see the hill and they've got to hang on in there as long as possible. Farron is also in there too as that Hushoff grits his teeth now. Now they will see the finish, the last couple of hundred metres to the line. As they come off that final bend, they can't wait any longer, but you know that's too far. Mark Cavendish can't possibly hold this up for this far, can he? He's kicking again, but I think it'll come something and will come over him here. But if he holds this, Paul, he is a very, very strong rider. He led out so far down the track, I didn't think it was possible. There's no one could touch Mark Cavendish with a win like that. That was incredible. Phil, there was a little bit of added motivation in the sprint of Mark Cavendish this afternoon because of the relegation uh, a, a full post a week ago in Besançon. It was a long way to the finishing line, but he could feel the challenge coming alongside him. You know, when you're a sprinter, you can almost feel the wind moving behind you when guys are starting the challenge. There, looking back, he sees it's Hushoff. He can feel now the acceleration coming there from Cholik on his left-hand side, and he kicks. Cholik comes up to his bottom bracket there, the pedals on the, on the bike, and all of a sudden he kicks again. This man has got an incredible turn of speed. Hushoff just has to be happy to finish in the slipstream. Second for Hushoff, third for Cholik, but that's a great win for Mark Cavendish. A great win, a record-breaking win, and two days early. We all have the Champs-Élysées on Sunday marked down as the day that Mark Cavendish would get his fifth win of this tour and break Barry Hoban's British record of nine overall. He evidently couldn't wait, and now he'll be going for number six in Paris. There's the very familiar stage result, Cavendish first, who shot second for the third time at this tour, ahead of Gerald Cholik, Greg van Evermart, Oscar Freire, Jérôme Pinot, Fumiyuki Bebu and Nicholas Roach. Tell you what, that's how I'll go down as my most memorable win of my career ever. What makes you say that, Mark? There wasn't a stage for me. You could see Rabobank full gas, they didn't think I was getting over that. They ran full gas on the climb, I said to the guys this morning, wait with me, just wait with me on the climb, okay? And they were all with me, they all stayed with me and we stayed at the front. And I wasn't in much problem, it was, it was sore, it was painful. You know, hanging there, hanging there, hanging there, it was so hard. And then the two got away and we had three guys chasing, you know, Maxime, George and Tony, and they were still there for the lead out. And you saw they did the K at the end each. And then Tony took me, took me, took me, took me, and he's dying, dying. 
250, 300 on that slightly uphill finish. It was too far for me to go, but I had to go before the others got the jump. And I gave everything, everything for the line, you know. And, you know, that's the disappointment of the last weeks. It's just made up for it. That was amazing. That was so, so amazing. I'm so happy there. So, so happy. Now, behind Mark Cavendish, and not for the first time in this race, there was a split in the field. And guess who was the last man across the line on the right side of it? There's Lance Armstrong just hanging on to the leading bunch. There's the split. And there's Bradley Wiggins riding close to the front, but not quite close enough. He came in two places behind Armstrong, but lost four seconds, and so did just about everybody else. Twelfth place was the cut-off point, Armstrong was in it, the rest of the top eight were in the second group. Now here's a touching moment, Mark Cavendish reconciled with Tua Hushoft after their exchange of sound bites following Mark's disqualification on stage 14. Sorry about that. Peace in our time, or at least until Sunday, safely secured. Mark and Tour were ready for their podium appearances. Alberto Contador's lead remains unchanged too, still 4.11 over Andy Schleck. Lance Armstrong, though, edges four seconds closer, not so much to taking second as securing third. Bradley Wiggins is now 15 seconds behind him in fourth place, with Andreas Clodin another two seconds back in fifth. And Frank Schleck will be a threat to move up on Mont Ventoux tomorrow in sixth.